whereas he has by his art, as an historian, and his judgment as a statesman, made the past the servant of the future. Now, therefore, I, John F. Kennedy, President of the United States of America, under the authority contained in an act of the 88th Congress, who hereby declare Sir Winston Churchill an honorary citizen of the United States of America. All right, folks, and uh, joining us now is uh, Thomas Mayer, author, journalist, and biographer, and his great new book, When Lions Roar, the Churchills and the Kennedys. I'm sure we'll put it up there on the uh, screen for you. There it is. Um, welcome. Appreciate you coming in. What a what a wonderful, uh, masterful work, and it, uh, and what a fascinating topic that most people don't know anything about, this, this relationship that started back with uh, Joseph Kennedy, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, most books about Churchill are written by Brits, with a few exceptions, and a lot of the Kennedy books have been written, most of them, by Americans. But in many ways, the, uh, the story of the Churchills and the Kennedys is not really of two parallel lines, but of constantly intersecting lines between friends, mutual friends, and that's really what this book is all about. And, and as I mentioned, it started, talk, talk about its genesis, how it all uh, came about when, when the first uh, relationship sprung up. Well, the, the beginning of the Churchill-Kennedy relationship is in the early 30s. Now, most of the history books were written after World War II, and, and most people said, well, Churchill and the Kennedys, they despised one another because of what happened in World War II in which uh, they very much disagreed. Joe Kennedy was an isolationist, and of course Winston Churchill was essentially trying to save not only Britain, but all of Western right, civilization yeah. from the Nazi yeah. threat. But in fact, they had been friends before World War II. And uh, that's one of the biggest discoveries in my book, is the, the friendship between the two families, including business relationships, that I, I found absolutely stunning. How could that go so, so unnoticed and unreported? <laughs> well, uh, after uh, World War II. Is that a purposeful II, yeah, I think distortion? Very much so, yeah. Yes. I think after World War II, Winston was not happy with Joe Kennedy, needless to say. And in 1946, bear in mind, Jack Kennedy was running for Congress for the first time uh, in a very Irish Catholic right. district up in Boston. They didn't particularly like the British. Uh, and so Jack, there's actually a letter in my book that I quote where Jack writes the rest of the Kennedy family saying, cool it with all this talk about London and, and the British. Uh, I've got to run, I've got to, I'm running for Congress, not for Parliament. Right, right. All right, so we saw what we saw in that video. Um, what brought that about and how significant was that? Well, I thought what's really interesting about uh, their story is, as I said, they started out as friends. Then they had this very yeah. bitter uh, division over World War II. But then the second generation of the, of the Churchills and the Kennedys become friends. And through mutual friends, they, uh, J JFK, President Kennedy, was convinced that he should have an honor, a ceremony for honorary citizenship bestowed to Winston Churchill. By that point, Winston was so old that his son, Randolph, stood in for him. Right. And Randolph and Jackie Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy and JFK were very much friends in, their, in the uh, early 1960s. It is fascinating. And, and it speaks to the, you know, the, the relationship between the two, the two countries in the very close relationship over, over the years. Absolutely. And I think what people don't fully understand is how much of an impact Winston Churchill both by example and by his words, had on President Kennedy. Uh, in many ways, the British Empire that Winston Churchill was the, the great defender of, the proponent of, all around the world, in many ways, we have become the, the new British Empire. Uh, the, uh, the United States has very much taken on the burdens and the responsibilities of such an, of the old British Empire, and that's very much influenced by Winston's example. Now, are you familiar with the controversy over the Churchill bust and Obama and sending it back? Right, and, I uh, am. Uh, sure. Is that is I mean, as far as you could ascertain, is that actually factual? And 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 what is that? If he did it, I mean, that that would signify a, a break from everything you've just talked about. Well, I didn't talk about the, that particular yeah. bust and the President Obama. But I do think what's interesting to me is how many Americans uh, held Winston Churchill in, in great, great esteem. esteem. Absolutely. And for me, bear in mind, Winston was uh, kind of a hyphenated character. He was both, his mother was born in Brooklyn, right, right here in New right, York. Right. So he was always aware that he was half American. Right. And some of his detractors in Britain would say, oh, you know, he's half Yankee. But uh, I think Americans are particularly 
uh, enthralled by Winston's story. And you will be enthralled by this book, folks. Uh, it's When Lions Roar, fascinating stories you could tell. And uh, pick it up, and we'll be back. I thank you very much, uh, uh, Thomas, for coming in. We'll be back with more of the show right after this.